بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم انفعني بما علمتني وعلمني بما ينفعني وزدني علما إنك العليم الحكيم اللهم أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكربنا بنور الفهم وافتع علينا بمعرفة العلم وسهل أخلاقنا بالحن اللهم ارزقني نعمة الإخلاص لوجهك الكريم بكل ما أقول وبكل ما أفعل آمين يا رب العالمين My topic today is about discussing some cases and try to test yourself before looking to the answers My cases today is part two involving some of the knee cases. Here, this is a lateral knee x-ray as we see here. What we see in this lateral knee x-ray. Try to test yourself before your answer. Here, this is a clue for you. What is this? Here, we see lateral knee x-ray. As we see here, soft tissue density in the subrobatilla region. And this is oval in shape, homogeneous soft tissue sin density. As we see here, this is the fatty plane here, and this is the fatty plane here. And the fatty plane and the subrobatilla vessels are separated. And this is due to effusion. And this is the knee joint effusion, splitting the fatty planes or fat bed in the subrobatilla vessels and representing as soft tissue density. Next case, what you see, try to test yourself before I answer that case. This is a case of Cross-table lateral of the knee joint after trauma. And we see here fluid level, fat fluid level. The fat is anterior and the fluid is posterior. And the fluid here is blood. So this is fat blood level and we call it lipo hemoarthrosis in the knee and this is due to most likely and frequently associated with tibial fracture or distal femoral fracture and rarely is associated with patellar fracture. And the uh, blood and the fat, it is escaping from the marrow of the joint to the into, to the knee joint, representing as lipohemoarthrosis. So this is a classic case of lipohemoarthrosis. Sometimes the fracture line we cannot see in the brain film, and we need CT scan to rule out the fracture. The third case, here, uh, this is an AB view of the knee joint. What you see, here we see an osteochondroma 
and there is a bit uncollated bone with cartilage cap around the knee joint and it is projecting away, away from the knee joint. Usually these patients are asymptomatic and it is common finding and incidentally seen and accounting about 10 to 15 percent of bone tumor and accounting about 35 percent of all benign tumor and thought to be it is a developmental anomaly. As I said, it is usually asymptomatic and have low malignant potential. If it is sporadic and solitary. The next case, we see knee joint, AB and lateral view. What you see? The next case, we see a knee joint with AB and lateral view. And we see here the medial compartment of the joint is decreased. Joint space is decreased comparison to the lateral compartment. And we see some osteophytosis here. And also we see some osteophytosis around the superior and inferior part of the patella and some sclerosis around the joint space. And we see here the loose anterior subcondyle cystic changes. And the, also we see varus deformity. So this is a case of knee osteoarthritic changes with osteophytosis, narrowing of the joint space medially, and subcondyle cystic changes, and sclerosis of the subcondyle area, and associated with betulofemoral osteoarthritic changes. Next case, this is a trauma patient. What do you see? Here we see the medial compartment, it is normal, and the lateral compartment is widening compared to the medial compartment. And this is, in this patient, we, as I said, it is a trauma patient. So what is the, uh, here the, in that area, here that ligament, it is called lateral collateral ligament, and one, once it is ruptured, so the, the, this compartment will be opened, and so this is a lateral collateral compartment ligament injury with virus deformity. And Maybe this is associated with anterior crochet ligament and meniscal injury. We need to do CT MRI for further evaluation of this patient. Here, the next case, what we see this is a spot of view, view of AB view for the knee joint. We see here there is calcification involving the menisci and the, of this patient. And what we call it, this is chondrocalcinosis. So this is chondrocalcinosis. This is calcification of the menisci. What is the type of cartilage here? This is a homework, and they try to find what is the difference between hyaline and fibrocartilage. Chondrocarcinosis, there are many 
types, many causes. Some of them include CBBD, calcium biophosphate dihydrate disease. Other causes include gout, arthritis, osteoarthritis, hemochromatosis, and Wilson disease, and another, uh, other causes. The most common cause of chondrocalcinosis is pseudogout due to calcium biophosphate dihydrate disease. And it is a rheumatic, a rheumatolog rheumatologic disorder with a precipitation of calcium biophosphate dihydrate crystal in the connective tissue. And it is seen as what we see here. So this is a case of chondrocalcinosis. Here, the next case, we see AB and the skyline view of the patella. What you see? This is patient with two patella, two part of the patella involving the superior lateral aspect of the patella. This is the lateral aspect of the patella, and this is the superior aspect of the patella due to unossified, unfused accessory ossification center. And this is the superior lateral accessory ossification center are uh, not fused, and usually fused at the age of 12 years. And this is this condition called bipartite patella, and it is okay in about 2% of population, and usually bilateral in about 40% in, in cases, and it is more common in, female, in males than in females, and usually asymptomatic, and uh, discovered incidentally and and it may may cause about knee pain after trauma or sport injury. The next case. is a trauma patient with the cross table lateral x-ray of the knee. As we see here, posterior knee dislocation. The knee is the tibia and fibula, it is posterior to the to the femur. And this is a common and uh, tibia and fibula are dislocated posteriorly. The there are five types of dislocation of the knee, the anterior dislocation which account about forty percent and the posterior dislocation, which account, uh, posterior dislocation account 33 percent. And these are uh, the, the dislocation of the knee associated with ligamental injury, especially the by crochet ligament. And also, uh, this is one of the Complication is bobliteal artery damage, and also 
nerve damage is reported in about 30%, especially the common peroneal nerve. And it is injured more than the tibial nerve. So this is the posterior dislocation of the knee joint. Here, this is the next case. This patient has knee pain and go to the acupuncture doctor and he put some needles in the knee uh, from and these needles are from gold. And this is the as we see here acupuncture needles, multiple acupuncture needles in this AB and lateral view of the knee joint. And this is the last case, what we see. We see here, compare the left one with the right one AB joint, as we see here, total knee replacement. And this is the, on the right side, and this is the treatment of choice of uh, knee osteoarthritis. And can be two or three compartment involvement. And in this patient, the total knee is well done, and there is no complication of the total knee in this patient. Thank you for listening and hoping to see you soon in another talk. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك